go. So come to your yoga mats and come to a cross-legged sitting position tonight for your self-nourishing yoga class. Um, I suggest that you sit up on something, even if it's something small, like Usually I use a blanket and fold it like this and with no wrinkles in it, so it's comfortable. And then you put your sitting bones on that and you're able to have the hips a little bit higher than the knees. This is the objective. If the hips are a little higher than the knees, then you're able to keep the pelvic tilt so that the spine is more comfortable and you'll be able to sit in a position for a little bit longer. But he's getting settled. I see a dog. <laughs> That's cute. Amy. Everybody looks good. Okay, you all look settled. So, close the eyes. Bring the hands on the legs. Allowing the legs to take the weight of the arms. Elongating through the spine, so you're sitting up nice and tall. But see if you can sit tall and use as little muscular effort as possible. Allowing the hips to relax, the legs to relax, the shoulders, the face. Slowly settling the mind and bringing yourself inwards. As you bring yourself inwards, Start to naturally notice the vibration of the body as well as the movement of the breath. If it feels like there's still some agitation in the body, the breath, or the mind, and start to deepen the breathing by lengthening the inhale and lengthening the exhale. Perhaps making a soft sound with the breath. Bring the hands in front of the chest. Let the chin come down a little bit. And perhaps you want to give yourself an intention for the next hour and 15 minutes. Any personal intention.
in the circumstances, the situation, and knowing that you always deserve love, forgiveness, to be seen, just as all other beings are also allowed these privileges. Focus, the focus will be allowing the heart to, to remain open with skillful action and unskillful action. We'll chant OM. Inhale, if you can, you keep Mulabandha. 
and exhale. again. Exhaling fully from the bottom, all the air coming out. Inhale and exhale. So when you're learning this, it's slow pumps, relaxing the belly in between the pumps. If you've been doing it for a while, then you can speed up the rhythm. When you lose the rhythm, that means that's the end of that round. If you lose count or your mind goes elsewhere, that means it's the end of that round. When you're finished, keeping the eyes closed. And start to apply ujjayi breathing through both nostrils, inhaling and exhaling through both nostrils. Feeling the chest expanding with the inhale, releasing with the exhale. If you can, you're trying to keep Mula Bandha and Uriyana Bandha through the breathing. This is going to stimulate the body, stimulate the mind. But as it stimulates, it's also a calming effect. So it's not a stimulation like if you're drinking coffee or tea. So trying to maintain Mula Bandha and Uriyana Bandha. Opening the eyes, bringing the hands out to either side of you. Keep the ujjayi breathing. So we're going to keep that practice ujjayi for the entire practice, at least closer to the end, so that we're working on expanding the chest, opening the heart center. Feeling able to accept Accept everything that is coming towards us and letting it go. Open the palms up. Inhale, lift the arms up. Exhale, releasing the arms. Inhale, reaching the arms up. Exhale, arms down. Make it dynamic. Inhale, open. Exhale, release. We're going to start to open the chest with the inhales. Inhale, opening, lifting the chest up towards the ceiling a little bit. Exhale, release. Inhale, open the chest. You can look up slightly. Exhale, release. Then see if you can add a little bit of a back bend there. Inhale, small back bend. Exhale, release. Inhale, a little deeper back bend. Exhale, release. Doing a couple more at your own breathing rhythm. Inhaling, you can gaze up with the inhale, gaze down with the exhale. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Feel like you're smiling from the inside. Two more. And coming back. 
back with the fingertips beside you. Bring the arms out to the sides, thumbs pointing up. And then we're going to inhale, lengthen, exhale, turn to the right. Exhale back to the center. Inhale in place. Exhale, turn to the left. You can turn the palms upwards, releasing the shoulders. Exhale back to the center. Inhale in place. Exhale to the right. Inhale in place. Exhale to center. Inhale in place. Exhale to the left. Inhale in place. Exhale to the center. And then continuing at your own breathing rhythm. Inhaling. Exhaling. center, place the hands on the floor in front of you, walking the hands forward, reaching as far forward as possible, and then press into the hands, open the heart center, press the sitting bones towards the floor, even if they're not firmly grounded, just make that intention like they're reaching towards the floor. Pull with the hands, open the chest, Exhale, push with the hands, ground the sitting bones. Inhale, pull with the hands, open the heart center. Exhale, push with the hands and feel grounded. And working back and forth. Inhale, open, exhale, ground. Ideally, this is what we're looking for in life. We want to have an open heart, but we also want to be steady, grounded, maintaining certain boundaries. Use the breath, open the heart, exhale, ground. Inhale, open, exhale, feeling centered. Then walk the hands towards your right, towards your right knee, same thing. Push into the hands, feel the left sitting bone trying to reach a little bit towards the floor. Inhale, open, exhale, feeling centered. Working with your own breathing, making that nice, soft sound of ujjayi. Stabilizing the nervous system. Walking the hands back to the middle and walking them over towards the left. Pushing the hands, feeling the right sitting bone coming a little bit grounded, even if it's slightly hovering from the floor. Open the chest with the inhale. Exhale. Inhale. So it's a little bit active. You're moving a little bit. Inhale. Open the chest. Exhale. Ground. Notice that as you are in the body, as you are in the emotions in the mind. Coming back to the center and then lean forward and come on to the hands and the knees. Can move whatever you're sitting on. And we're going to tuck the toes under and we're going to bring our weight into one wrist, one hand. Bring our weight into one knee, other knee, other hand. So you start making these spirals, I guess. <laughs> whatever you want to call it. So basically, you're just going to do whatever feels really good on the body. So you're arching the back, bringing the spine to the ceiling, doing side bending, bending the elbows, pulling the lower belly in, reaching the spine towards the ceiling, making it your 
own, moving with your own breathing, with your own body. Moving the hips, stretching. There's no right way, there's no wrong way. It just is as it is. And then change the direction of the spiraling. Move the shoulders around a little bit. Just seeing if you can work out any little tight spots. Any places with some anxiety or stress. Just work it out. Back to neutral. Bring your sitting bones towards the heels. Come high onto the fingertips. Pull the lower belly in. Bring the ears between the upper arms. Feeling this nice elongation feeling through the entire body. And then place the hands firm on the floor. Just keep reaching the sitting bones towards the heels. And if you want, you can put the forehead down to the floor. You can allow the shoulders to come towards the ears. Okay, so if you've been doing a shtanga with us and you have all this alignment, this, no alignment necessary. Just feel like it feels good. Bring the hands forward, walking the hands forward, and either coming to a puppy position, or if it feels good for you tonight, you can come into a downward facing dog. And keep the knees bent, straighten one leg or towards straight, switching, just kind of pedaling the feet, but notice that as you pedal the feet, Keep the lower back elongated. Okay, so it's more important to keep the spine in good health than to try to stretch the backs of the legs by compensating the spine. Fingertips on the floor and then lift the chest way away from the floor. 
You're welcome to bend the knees. But keep the back long, lower belly pulling in. Exhale, sliding forward. Inhale, keep the chest open. As you rise up, raising the arms. Exhale, arms down. So this isn't working with my hood. <laughs> so I'm going to remove that. Um, and if you have anything that you want to remove to be a little less hot just for a couple of standing positions. So if you've been doing that class, you know we just do a few just to invigorate slightly the body, but not, not too much, so it's not too, too difficult because the purpose of this class is to let go, let go of any judgment, uh, anything, I'm doing it good, I'm doing it bad, let go of all that. So open the palms, inhale, raise the arms, Exhale, bending the knees, folding over, relax the head. Inhale, come halfway up. Exhale, put the hands on the floor and step the feet back. Lower the knees, pelvis, chest to the floor. Inhale, a cobra pose. Exhale, turn the toes and either puppy or downward dog or even child's pose. Listen to yourself. Take some deep breathing breaths. <laughs> Enjoy the breath. The breath is nourishing you. And then bend the knees, step the feet forward, inhale long back, halfway up, exhale release over the legs. Inhale, coming all the way up. Exhale, arms to the sides. So make as little, use as little muscles as possible. Inhale, exhale, just moving with the rhythm of the breath. Inhale, exhale, stepping back, take an inhale in plank. Exhale, knees, pelvis, chest. Inhale, cobra. Exhale, downward facing. Find a steady gazing point. Try to still the body and still the mind. Arching back a little bit. Exhale, but just a little bit. 
Inhale, open the chest. Exhale. One more. Inhale to open. Exhale. Bring the arms down. Straighten that front knee. See again if you can swivel the hips forward. Open the arms to the sides. And see if you can bring the spine parallel with the floor. If it hurts the back, put your fingertips down or put them on a block. Should not hurt the back, especially if you're using the belly muscles. Inhale, come up. Step the right foot forward, step the left foot back at an angle. So there, it's like Virabhadrasana, um, A alignment of the feet, and then turn the hips. Bend that front knee, bring the arms into these W arms, elbows forward, backs of the hands pushing back, and then inhale, arch back a little bit, exhale, come to neutral. Inhale, arch back, exhale to neutral. Inhale, open heart, exhale, keeping the belly firm in. Inhaling, exhaling. One more. Inhale, exhale. Straighten the front knee, swivel the hips, bring the arms out to the sides, and trying to bring the spine about parallel with the floor. Pull in the belly, feel the neck is long. Find the gazing point. Inhale, come back up, soften the knees, and step back to the front of the mats. This time you're going to step your right foot back, turn your left toes in so the outside of the feet are parallel. From here you're going to inhale, raise the arms up, interlace the thumbs, and reach the baby sides of the hands all the way up to the ceiling. So you feel this nice lengthening all the way along the outer sides of the body. Bring the arms out to the sides. Exhale, bring the spine parallel with the floor. Bring the left hand on the floor right under the face. And then see if you can open the right side. Try to keep the hips level, lower belly pulling in. Press the lower hand into the floor to reach the chest way away from the floor. And then switching hands. Right hand down, left arm up. Push that right hand into the floor. Keep the hips level, open the chest. Breathe fully. Lower the hand to the floor, bend your right knee, bring your right hand on the outside of the ankle and try to hold kind of behind towards the Achilles tendons. And then you can bend towards your right, stretching a little bit on the inner left leg. And then you're gonna switch sides. Bring the hand over the ankle to hold behind the Achilles, bend the left leg. And then we're going to work with the breath. Inhale, straight. Exhale, bend to the right. Inhale, straight. Exhale, bend. We're not going to our very maximum of range of movement. Just little movements to feel like I'm moving the body, moving, getting some blood flow, awakening the cells. And then come back to center, both hands on the floor, open the chest, slide the hands back, and if it's possible, you're bringing your arms kind of in a tripod situation. So the elbows over the wrists, crown of the head, feeling heavy towards the floor. Inhale, lift the chest. Exhale, hands to the hips. 
Inhale all the way up to standing and then just wiggle the feet towards one another like so. Okay, so come into a nice strong samastiki so you feel great on two feet. So you can stand, it's called equal balance. So standing equally on the two feet, bring the core so it's slightly firm and then soften the right knee, pick up the right knee, interlace the fingers over the shin bone, use your shoulder blades to lift the knee a little bit higher, holding here, elongating through the spine. Once again, noticing that if you find a steady gaze, the mind is a little, it's a little bit easier for the mind to settle. Holding your shin only with the left hand. Take your right hand towards the knee. And you're going to open the right knee out to the side. Seeing if you can keep both hips about level with the floor. Bring your left arm out towards the side. Helping you with the balance. Bring your knee back into the center. Bring your left hand on the outside of the knee. Drop your right hip and reach your right arm out behind you. Seeing if you can gaze towards the side. Just a mini twist. Bring both hands forward. Interlace the fingers under that front thigh. Open the chest. Elongate through the spine and see if you can start to straighten the leg. If it doesn't straighten completely, release the hands and then even if the foot comes really low to the floor, it doesn't matter, just straighten the leg out. And release. Okay, second side, strong samastidhi. Then start to soften the left knee. Picking up the left knee, interlace the fingers, use the shoulder blades to lift the knee a little bit higher, holding here. Soften the face, use the sound of ujjayi to keep the mind concentrated on your breathing. Now holding your chin with your right hand, take your left hand on the outside of the knee and start to open to the side. Right arm can come out to the side, seeing if you can keep the hips about level, firming on the, that right buttock, and breathing. These balancing poses, they often show the state of your mind. I notice when I'm a little out of balance, balance emotionally or mentally, oh, balancing poses are so much harder. And coming back to center, Bring your right hand over your knee on the outside, stretching the left arm out behind you, seeing if you can look towards the side, noticing that that right foot, you're using the foot muscles to keep yourself balanced. Coming back to the front, interlace the fingers under the thigh, roll open the shoulders, and see if you can work towards straightening the knee. When it feels like you can't straighten it anymore, release the hand, you can let the foot come down, and just holding it out here. And releasing, coming back to the front of the mat. Inhale, raise the arms. Exhale, over the leg. Inhale, halfway up. Do it in a really easy way. Exhale, stepping back. Exhale, knees, pelvis, chest. Inhale, open the chest, cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Your mind went off the breathing. yourself 
yourself forward and come down to a sitting position. So if you have some bolsters, this is the great time to get them out and you're going to place it lengthwise on your mat like this. Um, if you don't have a bolster, you can take some cushions or even some uh, thick rolled up blankets. Actually, years ago, before we had bolsters at the studio, what we used to do is take a yoga mat. So maybe if you take this class next time and you want a suggestion, you take a yoga mat and then you take um, like a broomstick and you put the broomstick in the middle because then the broomstick will make sure it doesn't flatten it so much. Okay, so that's one nice way to make a, a bolster. So we're going to do Sukta Badakonasana. So the soles of the feet are touching and you're, you put something under your knees, so some cushions or blocks, and then you lie over the bolster. So if you know it, you go ahead and get into it. If you're not sure, then you bring your, it's important that there's no space here between your back and your bolster because you want to support your lower back and very often people even need two bolsters so if you find that's your case then you can put two bolsters or even take a block like this and you make it more of an incline okay so the, you need a sticky mat to do that you wouldn't do it on the floor and so it's going to stay something like this so up to you, go ahead, find yourself in a nice Sukta Bhada Konasana, lying back. Bring your arms in a way that they feel comfortable, so you can put them on the inner thighs. For instance, if you have lots of props, then you can even put props under your arms. But I know at home, we, especially in Paris, we're we have small dwellings. We don't have places for three and four bolsters. Okay, so something, something like this, either letting the arms come to the side or placing them on the, the hands on the inner thighs. And then see if you can relax here. Relax the jaw. Check that the chin is slightly tucked in. It should not hurt the neck. If your neck feels uncomfortable, please just come out and put something under the head. You guys look pretty good to me. You've probably had some in-person classes, so you know how to get yourself into this pose, clearly. Okay, so bring yourself inwards. And bring yourself back to your personal intention. So if you're using my intention, feel your heart area expanding with the inhales. You can feel the breathing in the in the chest. Allowing yourself to be all that you are, and all that you are is not depending on your outward actions. Okay, we start with the inner actions, the inner intentions. So as I said, sometimes our inner intentions manifest themselves as skillful action and sometimes unskillful action. When we find ourselves in unskillful action, there's no use to berate ourselves, to be too harsh on ourselves. More use in noticing it, paying 
paying attention and telling yourself you'll do better next time. You'll try to do better next time. Focus on your breath. Try to keep the breathing rhythmic. The inhales and the exhales the same length. And as you do so, allowing the muscles of the body to melt. They're melting into the support. You feel like you can trust that support. Noticing the facial muscles, they can stay released, soft, like they're smiling from the inside. And you're going to slide your hands so they're under the thighs and use your hands to pick up the legs, separate the feet away from you and away from each other and let the knees fall towards one another. Relax the arms again. Just taking a couple of breaths here. you're ready, you're going to roll off your bolster, relax on one side, you can use your arm as a pillow. Like this, with 
both hands, and then you reach the baby finger side of the arms up and away, and you start to bring the block over the head. You need to engage the belly so that it doesn't just fall, so that you move slowly, bringing the arms over the head so the ears, maybe you pass the ears a little bit, but don't let the block collapse onto the floor. So you can hold it there for a couple breaths, and then inhale back up, and exhale going back. So do, you can do this a couple of times. Notice that you can use your belly to find strength in the arms. Opening up the heart. a few rounds, take your block, put it aside, hold your elbows, reach the elbows up towards the ceiling, and then bring your arms over the head. And if this feels comfortable for you, you can stay like this. If for some reason there's pinching in the shoulders, you come out of it straight away, or anything that you feel doesn't feel right, use your intuition, you just come out. And then see if you can soften the legs, let the toes hang out to the sides, soften around the hips. back to your breathing. If there's any pinching in the lower back, same thing, come out, make your, your prop a little less high or fill in the space between the mat and your lower back.
let the breath become more soft. So not necessarily using ujjayi. The ujjayi is a it's stimulating but a relaxed stimulation to the nervous system. Um, but now we're going to see if we can just let go so that the breath becomes more and more quiet. Almost to the point that you can hardly notice that you're breathing. You're just melting into the floor, into the bolsters. You feel like there's no boundary between you and the environment around you. Slowly making your way out of the position, trying not to disturb the peace that you should be feeling at this point. And then you're going to turn and change sides with as slow and as little movement as possible. Bringing the bolster close to your hip. And just releasing over the bolster, doing whatever you need to do to make it comfortable. It should feel comfortable. Allowing yourself to release, allowing all the muscles to melt, allowing the breath to become super quiet, allowing the mind to follow the breath.
to a sitting position. If you want, you can sit up on something again. You're going to open the arms up to the sides. Bring the right arm in front of you. Bring the left arm over the right, intertwining the forearms, picking up the elbows, pushing the hands away, closing the eyes, relaxing the shoulders, relaxing the neck muscles, just feeling a nice stretch somewhere on the tops of the shoulders, between the shoulder blades. And then round the back slightly, bring the elbows towards the navel, let the hands drop, let the head drop, stretching out the upper back. Notice the breath, stay quiet, 
letting the mind follow, and that may feel settled and quiet. You can scan the body, noticing if you're holding any tension anywhere. Or if you find the tension, just gently release it. Checking with the ankles, the feet, the toes. Seeing if you can feel the, the skin and the muscles in those areas just melting. Releasing the calves all around the, the tibia. Letting them feel heavy. Relaxing around the knees. Over the knees, inside the knees. Relaxing the thighs, the hamstrings. Let all the muscles of the legs just feel completely released, completely relaxed. Relaxing the buttocks, the lower belly around the hips. Relaxing the middle back, the upper back, between the shoulder blades. So all those muscles feel soft. If your head is turned to one direction, just up the head and turn the face to the other direction. And then noticing the belly, the solar plexus, the chest. And see if you can release all those areas at the front of the torso. Relaxing around the shoulders. The upper arms. Letting those muscles feel like they're melting away from the bones. Relaxing around the elbows. Inside the elbows. Around the forearms. The wrist. Letting the bones just feel heavy. Heavy towards the floor. Relaxing the palms, the fingers, the backs of the hands. The whole body feels completely released. Relaxing the neck, the throat. Releasing the jaw. Relaxing the roof of the mouth, the tongue. Relaxing 
chest and the lips and all around the mouth. Relaxing the cheeks over the nose. Releasing any tension around the eyes, the eyelids, allowing the eyeballs to feel soft behind the eyelids. Relaxing the forehead the eyebrows and the point between the eyebrows. And imagining behind the face completely relaxed, completely at Eventually, if you're coming to a sitting position, bringing the hands in front of the chest. Recognizing the suffering in others. been working to open our hearts, open our hearts to ourselves. And let's see if we can share that open heart to all beings everywhere. And we chant Om Shanti. Nobody notices because we all do it together, but I'm doing it by myself. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> 